What's up everyone, welcome back to How to Become an Animator. I'm Sir Wade, and we have a lot of new people joining us on the channel. We went from 2 to 11,000 in like a week. So, welcome everyone. Uh, in case you haven't seen many of my videos before, the way this works is I do a quick intro, like most people, try to keep it short. We do the meat of the video, and at the end, if you're able to stick around, is where I usually ask for questions, or if I'm trying to figure out what to do next on the channel, if I have ideas, I usually bring them up towards the end. So if you want to vote for new things to come, stick around till then. But anyway, today's video is at the request of a friend of mine from Animation Mentor, Joy. This one's for you, sorry it took so long. This video is how to light your shot. If you just animated something, you're trying to put it on your reel, and you just want that little extra level of polish, maybe you don't just do a play blast, you light the shot. I'm going to show a couple different methods today on how you can light your shot with different amounts of time and effort. As always, if you have questions, drop them below, and if you don't want to miss more content like this, don't forget to subscribe. And with that, we are ready to jump into Maya. Here we go. We're gonna do this video in three pieces. The first, for anyone who's just kind of interested or doesn't know what lighting in 3D looks like, I'm just gonna show you an example, a quick demo of what it means to light in 3D. The second piece is gonna be a quick demo of the different light types you have in Maya, what they do, and how they work. The third piece is gonna be the least amount of effort, and that's gonna be just tips for play blasting with better quality so that you don't even have to worry about really lighting or rendering your scenes. All right, here we are in Maya. Just a quick example. This is a scene I've created, and it's based on another video that you've probably seen. Uh, we have a camera. And on the right, I like to keep the camera view that I am going to be actually rendering from. And on the left, I keep my, my actual 3D space that I'm going to be moving around in. Now, if I move around the scene, there's just a whole bunch of lights, these floating red things and that orb encompassing everything, even including this light bulb here. There's just a whole bunch of different lights I've created that you can, you can do all kinds of different things, whether you have geometry create lights or you just have these, you know, just these red discs everywhere. And if I go ahead and do a quick render, this is pretty much what that scene is going to look like as soon as it's done processing. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to delete all of these. So now that those are hidden, if you create what's called area lights, that's what these are here, they're actually just, think of them as light panels. Uh, you can change it to be different shapes and sizes if you're using the Arnold ones, and you can also preview the lights in Maya. When you move them around, the scale, the distance, all those things matter, direction, and you can duplicate them, you can get all kinds of different looks, and already you're starting to see that the scene looks pretty decent. But as you move on, you can also change the colors. So if you're going for kind of a nighttime look, you can go really, really dark. You can get like a club vibe going. Either way. So what you're doing here is just add more and more lights. And say you want to have a really bright light, you can put that in the lamp. And then you can kind of fake the look as if the light bulb were doing this. So go ahead and move this light into the lamp. The settings you're just going to have to play with. Uh, you can see it's really overexposed and bright. So just tweak that, move it around. And also remember, you're just previewing right now. We're not actually looking through a render view. We're just looking through the actual Maya viewport just to preview. So just to get an idea, I'm going to duplicate one more light. I'm going to get a TV, make it a bluish light as if he's looking at a screen and it's late at night. And if I go ahead and do a quick render, one thing to notice is that the lamp shade looks really nice. It's glowing from the inside. Um, it's actually going to look like this when you first try it out if you don't have the settings and materials correct. So stick around to the third tip and I'll show you how to make sure that that lampshade looks like this and not like that. Now you understand the general concept of making lights, placing them, giving them different intensities and colors to give you different moods and vibes for the scene. Now. The actual types of lights that you have at your disposal depend on whether you're using Maya's standard light packages or if you're going to be actually using Arnold within Maya 2017, 2018, and beyond. I'm focusing on the Arnold lights because they're way better, they look way nicer, rendering is faster, and so on. So some of the lights in Maya that you're probably used to are directional, point lights, spotlights, and so on. There's some area lights and things like that as well. I'm going to be focusing on the Arnold lights, so area lights, sky dome lights, mesh lights, and there are photometric lights, but I'm not gonna get into those. Now, if this sounds confusing, don't worry about it because I'm just gonna show you a really quick demonstration of what these lights are, what they do, and how you can use them in your scene. And it's really simple once you get used to it. So hang in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and create an area light. Now it's gonna come out default as this tiny little square thing. I'm gonna scale it up, move it around, and I'm gonna make sure that my other view is actually previewing the lights. Now you have to really crank up the intensity with Arnold lights to make sure that they're actually showing, but I can change the size, the shape, and the direction, so I went from a square light to a uh, disc light. Now, you can change the color, and you can see that previewing here on the right. You can make it kind of warm if you go towards yellows, or cool if you go towards blues. You can really tint it however you want. I recommend just tinting it a little bit, but that's an area light. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create some geometry. Just a little sphere here. I'm gonna move this sphere to the middle of the scene. I'm gonna make it a mesh light. What I've done is I've converted that from an object to a light emitter. Now, if I really turn up the settings, I'm still not going to see anything, even if I move it around. You notice on the right, I don't see the light. And that's because mesh lights don't really show up in the preview. You need to open the Arnold Render Viewer. So I'm going to pull that up here, make sure I'm on the right camera, and refresh the renderer. Now you can kind of see that there's light being generated 
from where that orb is. Now, if I go ahead and crank that back up, move this out of the way. Now, if I crank that up and I have it kind of green tinted, you can see here that the, the mesh itself is actually creating light. You can even make it so that you can see the actual ball of light in your scene. So if I go ahead and move that around, I'll show you that now you've got this little ball of light that is lighting the scene in 3D. Super cool. I'll turn that off. So next up, we have a skydome light. And that is basically going to create this big white sphere around the, around the scene. And it's going to give you a really bright white soft light around the whole thing. So you turn down the intensity a little bit and it becomes a little bit more natural. You can tint it in different colors and that's going to give you different moods. But it's just going to be one big soft light. Great for, you know, product shots, that kind of thing. If you combine it with area light, which is what I'm doing here, I'm going to add some more lights, give it a little bit more directionality. This is going to give you a really, really quick and easy way to light your scene. So I can go ahead and tint this area light in different colors, and it's only going to marginally affect the way that the whole thing looks because I've got that big white light affecting most of it. And then this is just supplementing, giving a little bit of fill. Now, the main use for this environment light is to actually change the white, link it to a file, and you can create kind of a 360 environment sphere, like this dome, to use to light your scene just like this. So now I've got this blurry image creating this different light setup, and you can change the intensity and things like that. This is a bad example. I'll grab another in a second. But the idea here is that you take everything on the left and use it to light your scene. Let me go ahead and up the samples, I'm just making the quality a little bit better so you can see more of the render. So let me actually just jump into this light really quick, and I'm going to tell that little light bulb to be a mesh light. So I'm going to have the actual bulb itself generate light. So I'm going to make sure that this light bulb is actually working. Um, I keep turning up the settings, the intensity, and I'm not really seeing much of a difference. So I'm going to hide this environment sphere just to make sure that the light bulb is working. And look at that, there is some light coming just from the bulb. So that's good. Now I want to make sure this lampshade actually looks right, because right now it's not lighting up like it should. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the lampshade. I'm going to give it a material. It doesn't matter what kind. I'll give it just a general color. Now the main thing that's going to make sure light shows through it is this little setting right here, backlighting. Change that from zero to one, and now when you render, you can see that the lampshade is actually glowing in the render because light is allowed to pass through it. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the image, get something better, a little bit more deserty. So when I go ahead and re-render, it should look a lot warmer, a lot more natural, like he's sitting in the desert somewhere. So there that goes. And look at that, you've got blues and oranges already into the render. I'll tweak some of the colors of the lamp, make it a little bit oranger to match. Now you can see that environment sphere working that is that image wrapped around that orb. And now I'll introduce some more area lights. And I'm going to try and match up just to give like shadows or, you know, fake the sun, basically. You need a more directional light than I had before. You can also do snapshots in your renderer. So you can kind of toggle between different things. You can look at old versions. And if you don't want them anymore, you can always delete any versions that you don't want and just look between two different versions. See which version you like better. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this ground plane and just scale it up. Not scale, rotate it. That way I have a wall behind him. So this is what the render looks like. If I just go ahead and leave that as is, I'll just rerun it. And very quickly you can see, with just a few lights, this is the result we get. It's a lot nicer than not rendering and having just what was in the, the viewport. Um, but really it just took making an environment sphere, linking any 360 photo, which you can download. I downloaded this image off some website for free, so you can do that. And then maybe you put an area light or a lamp. And already you've got something that looks pretty nice, pretty natural. Now here's part three, the final section that a lot of you have been waiting for. If you don't usually have time to render, or you don't want to worry about learning the lighting stuff, or maybe you're not supposed to light, or your computer's just not powerful enough, whatever the case may be, if you just need something quick, a preview in your viewport, and you're just going to run a play blast and you know upload it as an assignment or whatever you're going to be doing, these are the tips that are going to help make sure that your preview looks good. Now everything I'm about to show you resides up here. In any viewer, if you click on Renderer, Viewport 2.0, that's just kind of the viewer that you're looking through right now, there's an option box over here to the right. If you click on that, it opens this settings menu and there's a bunch of drop downs. Everything I'm gonna talk about is in here. So if you need to come back to this, just pause it on whatever I'm showing you and that's where you'll find all these following settings. You probably notice that when you play blast, everything's very pixely. This is gonna help fix that. So if you go up to renderer viewport 2.0 and the little option box, you're gonna find things under anti-aliasing. That's gonna get rid of that gross pixel edge that you're so used to. That'll make everything a lot cleaner as if you did render it. Now, the next thing is to fake some shadows, and that's gonna be under screen space ambient occlusion. You can change the amounts, you can make it you know, subtle or really pronounced, but that's gonna give you some nice contact shadows without actual shadows. Now, for real shadows, if you make a Maya spotlight, so ignoring Arnold, if you make a spotlight or directional light, there's different settings, different things you can do. I'm just gonna play with some settings here, tweak it, make it look a little, little bit nicer. But if you make any kind of shadows in Maya using Maya lights, viewport can actually generate shadows if you go to Lighting, shadows. 
and that's gonna have shadows there. Now, it's gonna be super dark for everything else. Now, if you create an ambient light, that's just gonna give everything a little bit more light, and so bring the intensity down, and you'll just get some general light everywhere. Now, if you're looking for how to fix the shadow darkness, you wanna click on your original light, and then there is a shadow section. You can just move that slider, and it'll make the shadows a little bit less intense. So I'll add one more light, I'll do a directional light, and I'll just move that to kind of fill in some of the darkness. I'll move the intensity down, and you can turn off the shadows so that you can fully light your scene in your viewport, and you don't even need to do a render, it already looks pretty good. You've got ambient occlusion, you've got shadows, you've got anti-aliasing, and with those things, it looks like a render, more or less, without having to actually spend the time rendering. Don't work like this, because it'll probably slow down your computer while animating, but when you're trying to do a play blast, it's gonna look a lot better. And that wraps up the Maya part of the video. Now we have a lot of new viewers here and I need to get your guys' input. What do you want from this channel? Why did you join? Why'd you subscribe? Glad to have you, but I need to know how can I best serve you? So I wanna take a poll. In the comments, I want you to leave me if you have any ideas, suggestions, recommendations, or ideas that you came here hoping to find, leave them below. And for those of you who know how this works, I have some other videos already kind of in the works that I wanna know, what do you want me to post next? We've had a lot of requests for things like constraint videos and other kind of Maya tool related things, curve editor, graph editor, that kind of stuff. If you really like the interview videos that we did with Ben, then I've got a bunch more interviews filmed. We've got topics on time management for artists, some geared towards art portfolios and getting hired, an interview lecture combo about subtext and personality in your animation, a discussion around polishing your animation, tips for doing that, demos of VR painting in Quill on Oculus. We also have kind of a moving to LA Q&A panel with some animation mentor alumni that I went to school with. I have a couple more besides that, but if any of those sound really great to you, let me know which one in the comments so I can make sure to work on those next. Also on the horizon are some tech reviews. We've got graphics tablets to look at. I have these actually super cool modular slider things. You just click together in pretty much whatever configuration you want. Anyway, I'm gonna do a whole review on these. These got sent to me from a company called Palette. They're really cool. They work with all the Adobe software and I'm trying to find a way to use them in Maya as well. So anyway, there's a ton of cool stuff to come and I have way more videos in the works than what I just shared with you guys, but these are some of the ones that are already in my hard drive, just trying to figure out which ones to post next. So for those of you who stuck around to the end, that's what you've got to choose from. Anyways, thanks for watching to the end. Vote on the videos you want to see next and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss them. Thanks so much for joining. I'll see you guys next time.